Oh, we are going into game two right here. This series, Bratok versus Moro. Here we go. We bring you the one and only Bratok right here. He's in the red trunks, and he is playing Terran to the southeast of the crevasse versus his opponent, the one and only Moro. He is in the blue trunks, and he is playing Zerg to the northwest. And uh, cross position against Moro is... He's got this thing, Moro, hasn't he? I noticed that a lot. How <laughs> many cross positions will Moro actually spawn in? I know. Merz is going to take that home when he goes back to the Swedish pro house. I'm like, dude, how did you do that? Every time you play against a Terran player, it's so... You always got cross positions. Well, and, uh, it's obviously leak hacks. I mean, what other course. explanation is there? He's so fast as the game loads, he types in cross position one, two, three, go. Yep. And uh, ID, DQD, some kind of cheat code, bring up the console. It works, does the job. Supply Deeper coming down right here for a Bratog. Very standard opening. Oh no. Oh, whatever the case, Moro will, I would imagine, try to expand on this map. Yeah, I mean, he's going to go for a 15 hatch, and it wouldn't, I guess, surprise me really if he goes for the double gas as well, uh, down on the low ground, get that creep spread connecting to that base. Yep. And uh, because if people do like to go, or players, Zerg players, do like to go for that bottom expansion. Um, play like two barracks is very viable here as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we saw Nada um, use it here as well against Hey Pro taking him down here. Um, so it's very viable to use. And there goes the drone down. It's actually going to be the scouting drone though first before he sends out the other one, which is followed shortly behind, which will be the hatchery on 15 down on the lower ground. Oh, yes. And lower ground is quite popular for Zerg on this particular map. You might think, well, why don't they just take this pocket expansion at the back? It's so, so safe. Like because he would quite like to take a third very shortly, and the third will be so, so safe. And Mora's really confident in his defense, so why would he not take that front expansion and leave this one till a little bit later on? And uh, Braddock here is going to build the supply depot immediately after the barracks finishes, and is going to be going for a very fast command center here. And uh, that will be on the pocket expansion here. Yeah, the very confident. And uh, the problem with this, though, is you can't really pressure really on, which is the downfall of going for a fast expansion. Obviously, you get a great economy, and you have excellent mid-game pushes, which are a lot stronger than usual. But the fact is that you can't pressure Zerg players, and that's why we don't really see so many fast expansion play uh, that often against Zerg players, because literally you need to stop them. You need to make sure they are not being greedy. When they hit 40 drones, you need to make sure they're building units there and not racing up to 70. Well, that drone's dead. I am sorry, Moro, but you're going to lose that. Whatever the case, nicely walled off there by Bratok, who is absolutely fantastic for the time being. He is happy with how things are going. There goes the expansion going down a little bit later than it could have, but not that that really makes all that much of a difference. And Moro's hatchery is about to complete. Four Zerglings coming out for Moro, as opposed to the usual two. Obviously, he wants to be a little bit more defensive with this more vulnerable spot right here. Yeah, he's going to take both the right-hand side Zelnaga towers, and then he'll poke up and down. Um, the, the kind of choke point where the destructible debris is on Braddock's front door. And we'll also keep another one for backup to go in and scout again very uh, very shortly after that. And we see Braddock going directly into double refineries after taking that expansion. And I'm sure we'll be seeing some form of factory coming up. And I wouldn't be surprised if he threw down double factories and started going for some blue flame hellions. As that's his current style. Good on Crevasse as well. I mean, dropping into that back expansion is very, very effective. And, of course, this area right here is really vulnerable to being hit from multiple angles. Oh, so wow, look at this. Third command center. That is really unusual. And that's trying to beat Moro at his own game right here. And I suppose it's trying to exploit the fact that Bratok is aware that Moro's style ZVT fairly early on is pretty damn passive. So he thinks he can do that. And that's an interesting play there by Bratok. It's like he showed that reactor to the Zergling. The Zergling was there and then he started it. I have to wonder if he did that on purpose. It's a possibility. Very, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely just playing mind games with Moro, looking, say, hey, what's up? You see my reactor on that barracks? Does that you mean Hellions? You know, yep. don't, don't gotta go Hellions. And he doesn't mind giving that information away. More importantly, he doesn't want to give the information on that third command center. Absolutely not. Which will be used for, for mules alone. We'll be able to saturate that natural a lot faster. And then it makes taking a third base so much easier to do in the very near future. And it does. And, uh, looking around now, we have Moro getting speed. He's also going to start layer very, very shortly now. And I like the fact that Moro always goes for this two hatchery directly into layer. It's very, very safe to do so. And, uh, and then you can easily take that pocket expansion as soon as you start going to layer. Yep. Interesting stuff going on right here with the starport placed directly to the barracks of the tank lab. It could be a swap around. Of course, it might not be. Could be for stim and things like that. You just never quite know. 
and we'll find out very, very shortly, no doubt. We've also got this command center now up, and of course, now that Hellions are on the field, Bratok has some fairly nice map control. He can start to retake the Zolnaga watchtowers from his opponent. He can start to deny information to his opponent, and Moro has no idea what's going on behind that wall right now. So we are going to have the switch over with the starport going on to that tech lab, getting out of Banshee as soon as possible to start, to start doing some harassment. And the third base has been taken for more after that layer has begun. He's now taking the, the, the third. We'll be taking that fourth gas very, very shortly down on that natural location. Start that gas income ready for when the layer finishes to go directly into that spire. Start building up that gas come so we can go into Mutalisks. Yeah, this is really interesting because it does look like direct Hellion pressure at the moment. I mean, he's shown two, he does have four, and we'll see if he decides to show more. I think he might even show six. Either that or he's going to hide those behind them, just go out with two again, and once again, sort of playing mind games with his opponent. Spire is on the way. Lair is up. So Cloaked Banshee play has kind of a limited shelf life at this point, because as soon as an Overseer goes up and there's muters in the air, then Cloaked Banshees are dead. That said, Spire's going to take another 80 seconds, Cloak is going to take significantly less than that, and the Banshee will be in the base by the time that finishes. But this will be a combo attack, and of course, Mora is nicely spread out, so there are all sorts of opportunities for mischief. Yeah, Mora sees the Banshee now, but passes the Overlord. He's getting an Evolution Chamber, will throw down just a Spore Crawler just in case. Anyway, can easily make an Overseer if need be. And the Spire not quite done, they're only at half way. And these Hellion 6 are doing a lot of damage here, though two Bailings are about to be bought, and they will instantly kill these. Yep, assuming that Bratok ends up running into them, they of course do not have Baneling speed, so he does have some opportunities right here. I'm going to scan out and try and reduce this creep spread. In the meantime, the Banshee coming around the back, the Cloak has now completed. And in comes the engagement, the Banelings are so very close, they actually do some damage. That was a very nice cleanup right there by Moro. Really good, but in the meantime, of course, he's going to deal with the Banshee as well. But that defense, exceptional. And there, Cloak turns on, he's going to be able to kill a lot of drones here, though not as much damage again that Braddock tried to pull off, not getting there. A lot of drones are going down now. The Overseer is out, and he's going to chase his Banshee away. Currently at eight kills, which is a lot, but he was expecting a lot more. Yeah, and honestly, he built 11 drones in the meantime. So actually, Braddock gave him a drone. That's math, folks. Don't argue. Okay. <laughs> um, so we are going to go back into this game. And now Mora is nice and comfortable. He's getting these Mutalists out now. He already has five in production. And we'll drone up a little bit harder. He's at 43. It's not very high because of that harassment from the Banshee. And uh, he's just going to use all the minerals for drones and all the gas for Mutalists as of this time. And look at that. Look how easy it was for Braddock to take that third base because he had the command center up and running. Yep. He's been mu using mules for the entirety of the game. And now throwing down three bunkers doesn't want to lose like he did on that gold base on Metalopolis. Yep, income is looking pretty good for Braddock, honestly. It's 48 to 49, plus four mules. So Braddock has a clear lead right here. Needs to watch out for that, but the Overseer is actually out of position right now, so Braddock should be able to split off both. He might even be able to get away with both of them. That would be a sneaky thing to do, and it's exactly what he does. So Moro missing out on that one, unfortunately. Overseer not moving as fast as it could. Doesn't have pneumatic-sized carapace as of yet, but there we go. He takes out one nonetheless, as decides to turn around and runs right into it. Now, if we have a look at army size, Bratok and Moro have very, very small forces, respectively. And, well, they're both playing very, very uh, macro-based yes, here. Yes, they are. And uh, 10 more drones in production. And Bratok is going to be able to push with such a strong force by the time all these upgrades finishes. I mean, that's what he's going to be looking to do here. Meanwhile, 62 drones for Moro. And he is killing as much of the destructible debris and rocks around the map as possible. Or rocks, in this case. And uh, yep. basically allows him to do counter attacks, to flank easier. And that's one of the strengths on this map that Terran players can use if Zerg players are not going to keep up with time. You know, this defense is really, really solid right here for Bratok. A fourth bunker going down, Supply Depot, Wall Off. That ramp is incredibly hard to attack, and of course the debris is still there. But, as you said, he has angles. Now Bratok is aware that these rocks have been demolished, so he's going to have to watch out just a little bit. Armory on the way in order to deal with the Thor harassment. Well, indeed, not the whole Thor harassment, the Mutalisk harassment. But whatever the case, as you said, upgrade count really, really strong for Bratok. Economy really, really strong for Bratok. But... Mora has really droned up exceptionally hard. He's got another 10 on the way. He was already at 69 to begin with. Kaldor. Ah, the Germans. Oh, it's okay. There we go. Problem has been solved for the time being. Whatever the case, we've got 79 drones versus 60 SCVs. And uh, Moro can try and take a fourth. 
he already has. There you go. He's sorting it out there. And Bratok, what what does he do from here? Does he expand? He's in a really defensive posture, working on all of these upgrades, but his army's not really that big. Harassment's going to be a bit difficult for him. Well, what he's going to try to do is when these upgrades finish, he gets the Marine and, and tanks out. He can easily move up and take a fourth base on this one Vespian Geyser and then basically set up siege mode there and then start to push from this location, start to push across the middle of the map, crawl towards the middle of the map, which is the cutoff point for mm -hmm. when this timing's coming. But uh oh, this medivac is going up north, spotted immediately by a Zergling, and Mutalus surely will be on the way up. But at the same time, we do have a double medivac, so we have this, the, the second one at the south location, which is not going to be spotted whatsoever. Really smart play for Bratok to move away. He is aware there's a large mutilus count. He is aware that that medivac will be shot to pieces if he actually hangs around. Bratok dropping in a rather curious position, I've got to say, and he's going to go right for what exactly? Well, he thinks that Mora could have expanded down the bottom south location. Mm -hmm. uh, Zerg players do do that for the fourth bases, expand to a yep. far away expansion, keeping it nice and safe. So unfortunately for him, that's not the case. Mora yep. expanded right next to his third base. And then at least now he knows where the Zerg has expanded and how the Zerg expanded. Have but you seen that the size of those That's a pretty big sacrifice to these Marines. Goodbye. Indeed. Well, there are 24 Mutalisks. It's going to be 29 in a minute. That's cleaned up. He's already got plus one. The amount of control that is now on the map right here for Moro is absolutely sickening. We've got 28 Mutalisks with a plus one upgrade. And at this point... What do you do as Bratok? You've got to defend because the amount of harassment that can be put in with 28 muters, even with turrets up, with plus one is ridiculous. He's also working on flyer carapace as well, so that's going to help him out an awful lot against the marines too. Yeah, that's why he has six turrets on this back expansion because yep. of that threat. And he's going to push forward now. He's pretty def he's pretty set up defensively. He's got four bunkers full of marines. I'm not sure if he needs all four, but that is very defensive to prevent any counterattacks. No and now he's slowly but surely going to move and edge towards this fourth base of Morrow. He needs to spread out very well. He's going to bring SUVs to build turrets and bunkers if need be. Here's the problem though, will he be set up and entrenched in time in order to deal with this push right here from Moro? There's a lot of Banelings in there, plenty of Zerglings, that's a lot more Banelings to add to that force as well, and Moro has them nicely covered. 18 Banelings coming in, more Zerglings on the field, he's already got 78 of those. braddock has got a really powerful defensive position, but it's so easy to crash through these tanks, and if he's able to kill a large number of Marines, then that means the Mutas clean the whole lot up. Yeah, and a cute little force of Zerglings is going to go to the right side, but Mora goes in from the front as well. Crashing into this, and will he be able to break the entire thing? Banelings detonate. Most of the siege tanks are very, very vulnerable right now. Marines got demolished, and he is bringing in a counter force right here. So, I don't know, Mora didn't really achieve a huge amount there. He killed the entirety of the army, but the backup army, the reinforcements are there now. Yep. And now he's going to get great position while these Banelings are being morphed, and Mora is going in a little bit early here. The two one upgrades of these Marines are destroying these Mutalists. Here come the Banelings though. He needs to get out of there almost immediately. And really good splitting action right there from Bratok. Extremely good. He keeps the tanks alive. And now putting pressure on this fourth. And it was really, really great. Of course, Moro lost an awful lot more resource-wise than Bratok did. Bratok had what he needed to push forward. He's securing the fourth in the background. Down goes Moro's fourth as well. And Bratok looking really, really strong at this point. Indeed he is. And he's taken a fourth base of his own now he can very easily take a fifth base as well he is so far ahead right now two one upgrades the plus two armor is near completion it's about 60 percent plus two attack for the uh, the tanks as well and now he's gonna go for this other fourth base of Mora. and Mora really does not have a lot right now well, he lost a lot of Mutalisks there, and that was really his prime damage dealers with the upgrades and that. He just had a huge force, and that is down immediately. Moro knows he can't even do a thing. He does have this expansion down the bottom right now, which Bratok doesn't see, but Bratok has now taken a lot of control of the map, and actually he's reduced creep spread significantly too. Yeah, that's the, the true benefit of doing this. Three Marines, four Marines even, are just going up to the right-hand side of the map, scouting for any locations. And basically what Mor uh, what Braddock can do now is just suffocate Morrow. And despite Borrowed Banelings, Braddock does not care. Oh yes, in come the Banelings once again. They crash through the siege line and Braddock splits very well, but he did lose a lot of tanks there. Dude, his split is the best I've seen so far so in this good. tournament. Absolutely fantastic. Meanwhile, he's getting that fourth up now. And uh, he does have a few SUVs there, cooling down all the mules. More reinforcements are coming. 
two two marines at the moment but Moro is not giving up despite being on the back foot in the economy line he still has a lot of well graded mutilus 1-1 one, one currently lings are also at 1-1 one, one. yeah i mean Moro should be okay until he starts really mining out those bases at the back he's still mining an awful lot but here we go once again bane links coming in most of them crash against the siege tank line and brato keeps a lot of his marines alive does he have enough i believe he probably does and once again repulses a very strong attack there Killing off all the tanks again. Moro using these mutilists so well, coming out every time, doesn't lose them. Spradock scan seals the bailing. He's like, oh, needs some tanks, he's gonna have to return. Yep. And it is interesting that he keeps doing that. Of course, it's preventing Braddock from going on a full-on attack. It's far too easy to be surrounded with just Marines. Far too easy to be hit by Banelings if you don't have that. Braddock smartly moving in right here. He knows that this is a very, very, very common place to expand, as you mentioned earlier. And in the meantime, Moro is taking the opportunity to try and split this army in half. Because, of course, Braddock doesn't have quite as large a force. That said, you've got tanks with plus two. They are going to absolutely destroy those Zerglings. And 1-1 one, one meets will survive some how against these two two marines kill down that little counter attack and a launch has been launched for Moro here Moro runs right into the firing line of the planetary fortress which picks up 10 kills he moves most of his mutants to actually clean this up and of course does a spawn but the second wave is coming Bratok with two two marines working on three attack as well and plenty of medevac support yeah this is actually going to clean up that expansion now all these drones are going to die they may borrow to hide for a little bit but they, are, they will die it's inevitable and now Morris cleaning up the right hand side of the map with the Musilis and a couple of links, trying to look for a new place to expand to as he knows the bottom left is definitely gone. We meanwhile we have Branoff, like you said, at almost plus three, 13 Marines are being built at the single time. That is a lot of barracks with reactors here. Very, very impressive amount, and of course, here's the thing. Usually at this stage, you're going to have a lot of Terran players saying, I don't want to build Marines. Why do I not want to build Marines? Because I'm terrified of Banelings. Bratok actually is not scared of Bane Banelings at all. It's absolutely ridiculous. The amount of split that he can do means that Banelings are effectively nullified. He's going to lose this drop by the looks of it. Hey, we brought friends. Yeah, indeed. That was, that was pretty good for Mara, but still at the same time, he just doesn't have the... The, uh, the, the kind of economy that he had before, 77 drones, but he just doesn't have the bases. The majority of those bit, uh, the drones are at this base here, and now we have Braddock setting up. Oh, and he actually doesn't deploy in time, so he loses all of his tanks very, very rapidly. It once again comes down to his Marine Micro. He doesn't lose a lot at all, and once again, Braddock holds, sacrificing tanks. He, he hates his tanks, what can I say? Here comes a massive drone push right here, and Braddock will be able to very easily Micro around that. The problem is that the Mutants are chewing through the Marine Force in the process. Look at how many drones he just threw away right there. GG. There you go. That's it.